Greetings, beloved. Welcome back. I'm Chelsea Barrett. Freedom is calling you now. Well, beloved, I pray that you were stirred by Wednesday's word from my spiritual dad, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. He spoke and said that 2019 is the year of open doors. Doors being plural, not just one door, but multiple doors. Before I get into the word today, if you were not with me on Wednesday, I'm going to do a roll in right now of the word from my spiritual father so that you too can hear this. But I also want you to go back and take a look at the full episode from Wednesday so you can hear everything that was spoken. But for right now, have a look at this. Here comes a clip. Right. I want to share with you that uh, if you probably never heard me speak before, uh, we're on 36,000 television stations around the world and uh, we have a university, Wisdom University, we have 5,000 churches on our database. Um, we travel and teach the uncompromised Word of God. So I want to share with you at this particular season, um, there's things happening in the spirit realm and you need to know that. We're going through transition. We're in the last of the last days, and some things are about to break loose. The year 2019, which is almost upon us, this year is the year of the open door. Many of you have been waiting a long time for doors to open, God to do this and God to do that. How does He do it? He doesn't bless you with a check in the mail signed God. He doesn't give you... A a brown envelope with hundred dollar bills. He gives you doors of opportunity so he can bless what you put your hands to. So open doors, open doors of worship, open doors of business, open doors of finances, open doors of restoration is about to happen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. This is your time, this is your season for open doors. Keep declaring it every day. Yes. Don't, don't say, oh, well, I don't believe that. Well, if you don't believe it, you ain't going to see it. It's that simple. <laughs> As you have believed, let it be done unto you. So you start believing it. You start declaring it. And you see, this is your time for open doors. Get close to God. Mm -hmm. Stay close to His Word. And listen to the Holy Spirit. And you'll see everything is about to turn around. Amen. Thank you, Dad. Well, beloved, I pray that that really stirred your spirit man up to get you in expectation, to get you in a place of anticipation for 2019. It's going to be a really good year. <laughs> it's going to be a really good year. As my spiritual father spoke, he said multiple doors are going to be opening up. The Lord gave me a word a couple of weeks ago, which I shared on this program, that the Word of God is going to come to us in 2019. Not that we won't still have to seek Him for the Word and seek Him for His presence, but God's going to start coming to us more often, just coming to us in our day-to-day -day activities and speaking things to our spirits. But we need to be in tune with God so that we can recognize His voice when we hear it and know how to respond to the Word of God, as well as to be able to recognize when those doors open that yes, this is an open door, and yes, this is a door from God, and yes, I'm going to walk through it so that I will be able to fully manifest what's in that door so the next door will open as well. Again, if you did not watch Wednesday's program, I'm going to link it below. You can go back and take a look at it at your leisure so that you can get the full magnitude of what we shared on Wednesday. Today I want to share a word with you to help you to be in position for what's coming in this season, but also for future. It's not just about today and what's going to happen in 2019, but it's about future, what's going to happen from this point moving forward, how you need to be in position for that. For those of you who subscribed at my website for the December 2018 word, you got a little bit of that already. So today I'm just going to unpack that a little bit more and just share some additional things that the Lord is speaking to me. So I want us to just dive right now into the word of God and hear from the word of God directly. We're going to read today from 2 Chronicles and I'm going to set this up for us before we start reading. So at this point in the Old Testament, there is a king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, 
And there are some other kings who want to make war with the king Jehoshaphat, make war with Judah. So this king, I love Jehoshaphat because he always says, before we do anything, before we go to war, let's go inquire of the Lord. He doesn't have a ready, set, shoot approach. His approach is always, let's go inquire of the Lord. So Jehoshaphat goes to the Lord in humility and he says, Lord, we really can't do this. We can't fight these people. So we need to hear from you, God. I need to know, what are you saying? Like, should we go to battle and what should we do? That's always the posture that we should have. That should always be our posture for everything, every decision that we make. We should be going to the Lord first. Even before we receive a prophetic word into our hearts and start activating it, we should be going to God and saying, Lord, is this from you? Is it for me? Is it for now? How do I respond? We should always be going to the Lord first and foremost, beloved. So let's jump into the word here today. Let's start in 2 Chronicles 20, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. So here we go. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeliel, the son of Mananiah, a Levite, and descendant of Asaph. And he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, march down against them, and they will be climbing up the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight the battle. Take your take up your positions hear this take up your positions stand firm and see the deliverance the lord will give you take up your positions stand firm and see the deliverance the lord will give you let's go on here mm. praise you lord god Ah, oh, thank you, Lord God. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. I just keep hearing that. The battle is not yours. Mm. Let's go on. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat, listen, beloved. This is some of what my spiritual dad has been teaching, and I've shared some things on worship as well. But listen to the response. So they get the word of God. Now listen to the response. Jehoshaphat, this is the king of Judah. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worship before the Lord. I want to put a plug in there before we go on. My spiritual dad has been doing a conference on worship and he's been teaching on the posture of worship. I've, God's been speaking to me as well about worship. If you've been watching any of our programs for the last two years, you have heard me speak consistently about worship. I'm going to be speaking some more about that when I release the word for 2019. But one of the things that my spiritual dad has been zeroing in on is that you have to have a posture of worship. As he says, it's not about singing two slow songs and two fast songs. <laughs> True worship is being in the secret place, in the presence of the Lord. It's being in that posture where you are bowed down. I can personally testify to you today that in some hard seasons in my life, even some good seasons, when I have assumed the physical posture of bowing down with my knees to the ground, with my face to the ground before God, not for man to see, but just being in a total posture of surrender before God, God has showed up in just such a tangible way, such a tangible way, beloved. So let's go on here. So Jehoshaphat and these people around him, the king's not too proud. He bows down with his face to the ground. And the people around him, they do the same thing after the word of the Lord was spoken. So let's go on here. It says, Then some of the Levites from the Kohoatites and the Korotites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. I want you to get this. 
They haven't even fought the battle yet. They haven't even gone up against their enemy yet. <laughs> But they heard the word of the Lord. They heard God say, listen, the battle is not yours. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. You will have victory. The battle is not yours. And just from hearing the Lord say that, they fall down to worship. They bow their knee to God to worship just from hearing his word because they took him at his word. And then they began to shout unto God. With a loud voice, they praised God. I spoke about this to some degree in the December word that I sent to those of you who wanted to be partakers and receive it. I spoke about it in the additional follow-up that I sent to you. But hear me today, those of you who have ears to hear, before you even go out to battle, before you even receive the physical manifestation of what God is promising you for your particular situation, for now and 2019 and all the years to come after. The Lord is saying, you've already won, so you need to praise him before you receive the full manifestation. Let's read on here. Now we're in 2 Chronicles 20, starting at verse 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness. Mm. Hallelujah. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. I want you to hear this. Jehoshaphat appointed these men, these men that were going to exalt God. They were going to sing praises to him about how good he is, that he, he is exalted forever. They were going to sing about the splendor of the holiness of God. Listen to this. It says they went ahead of the army. It didn't say they sent out first the Navy SEALs. It didn't say they sent out first the strongest men. It didn't say first they sent out the tallest men. It didn't say first they sent out the most qualified men. It said first they sent out these people who were worshipers, these people who were going to praise God. It says here that Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing the, to the Lord to praise him for his splendor. So it was the praisers that went out first. It was those who were going to worship God. God for his splendor that went out first before the army. Let's go on here. I hope you got that. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Amnon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. So the word says, as they began to sing and praise, <laughs> their enemies were defeated. They were in front. That's why you place them in front. That's why your praise needs to come before the victory. You've got to praise. You've got to worship before the victory. You've got to be in position to receive. So let's go on. They were defeated. They were defeated. These men that were coming after Judah were defeated. The word of God says here, The men of Amnon and Moab rose up against men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Mm, mm, mm. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked towards the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Beloved, what this is saying is they received the word of the Lord, Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah in Jerusalem. They received the word of the Lord. God said, the battle is not yours. The battle is mine. And don't be discouraged. No, no, don't be discouraged. Have faith in God. That's what King Jehoshaphat said. He said, have faith in God. Have faith in his prophets. Know that the Lord's word is true. He's going to do what he says. Now let's fall down and worship. Let's fall down on our knees and praise God. And let's continue praising him. Let's put the praise before the battle. And the word says, as they began to praise, the praisers were in front of the army. As they began to praise, it says that their enemy was defeated. And not only was one enemy defeated, but the Lord caused the other two kings and their armies that wanted to fight Judah and Jehoshaphat to defeat the third army and then they ended up defeating each other so by the time that King Jehoshaphat and his men got to the place where they were supposed to battle 
there were only dead bodies. All three armies that wanted to come against uh, King Jehoshaphat, Judah, and God's people were defeated. God did it as they praised as they exalted God, God did it. They didn't have to do anything but respond in faith and respond with faith of praising God. So beloved, what I'm saying to you today, the word of God that I'm giving you today is that you've heard the word for 2019. You've heard the specifics that God has spoken to you in your own prayer closet, in your own time of worship with the Lord. Now what you need to do is to respond. You need to respond in faith knowing that you believe God and just go ahead and start praising God. God right now for the victory. Start thanking God. Start exalting his name as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Prince of Peace in the earth. You need to open your mouth. You need to bow your knee and you need to confess Jesus Christ as the King of Glory. There is no battle that he has ever lost, beloved. Hear me today. Hear the word of God to you today. Ah, hallelujah, Lord God. I just praise you for this. I pray that your people are receiving this word and that there is a fire burning in their belly. There's a fire burning in their belly. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Oh, beloved, just begin to exalt God with me right now. Let's just exalt God together right now. Oh, Father, we praise your name. Oh, King Jesus, we exalt you. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the victory. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you, oh God, that you are Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Oh, we thank you, oh God, that you are Jehovah Gabor, our warrior. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah El Shaddai, God Almighty. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you are Lord, that you are Savior. We exalt your name. Oh, we thank you, oh God. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for 2018. We thank you for the open doors in 2019. We thank you for the opportunities. We thank you for what is to come in 2019 and all the years preceding that, oh God. We thank you for the years that will come after that. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory for who you are. Lord, we just say to you today that you are holy, oh God. You are holy, oh God. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, God. There is none like you. You have no equal. You have no rival. You are the Alpha and the Omega, oh God. You are the Ancient of Days. Oh God, as the deer pants for the water. So my soul, God, Longs for you. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. We give you honor, oh God. We give you honor. We give you honor, Lord God. We give you honor. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Beloved, I pray that you are being touched today. For those of you who are with me on the gratitude challenge, I pray that not only have you completed your 30 days of gratitude, but you've gone on to make this a lifestyle and that you're doing it in a way where it's intimate with God, not where it's religious, where you're just writing things to write them and you're so stuck in this that if you happen to miss a day, you feel inadequate. No, this is not meant to be bondage. This gratitude journal is meant to be freedom for you so that you can fellowship with the Lord and begin to see the wonderful things that he's doing in your life and thank him for it. My personal experience is when I'm grateful to the Lord, when I make it intentional to show my gratitude to the Lord, He continues to add more to me in a variety of ways. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, in my family. When I'm grateful to God, He always multiplies. He always gives me more to be grateful for. So I pray that all of you really are joining me on this gratitude journey. It's, it's a lifestyle of being grateful to God. I pray that you've all heard me today and will be in that posture of worship, not just in church. It's wonderful in church. I've got to say that the presence of the Lord has been so thick during our times of worship in church, during our times of just singing to the Lord. It's had a tangible effect on me. My body has just been shaking in a way 
that I've never experienced before at church. But as well as it's not just about at church, beloved, the true worship really happens at home when you're in that secret place with the Lord, when you can just get down on your knees and there's no one watching you. You're not watching anything else. You're only watching God. Your eyes are focused and fixed on Jesus. That's where the true worship begins, where you begin to talk to him intimately. You begin to thank him for who he is, for what he's done, but most importantly, for who he is. The God of all creation, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God who was, the God who is, the God who is to come, the name that is above every name. That's where true worship is, in your heart, and then you get in that posture of surrendering it all to God and just laying your love out before Him. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Or maybe you say, Chelsea, I am a believer, but I'd like to be refreshed today. It's your opportunity as well, beloved, to be refreshed. So go ahead and close your eyes with me right now and let's go to the Father and let's invite Jesus into our hearts. So close your eyes with me and just repeat after me right now. Father God in heaven, I know that you are the one true God. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for me and was risen again on the third day. Lord, I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I need a savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now and be my Lord and savior. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up afresh with your Holy Spirit. Give me a heart to worship you, to praise you, and to surrender to you today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beloved, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to your refreshing. You know what I'm going to say next. If you are not in a Holy Spirit-filled local church, pray and ask the Lord God to lead you to the right one for you. He will do that. Mm. I pray that you've really been refreshed and like stirring in your spirit to receive all that God has for you today. Don't just be a mediocre Christian. Don't do anything in life mediocre. Don't just be a pew warmer at church. Get involved. Get involved with God at church. Get involved with God everywhere you go. Get involved with God in your secret place. That's really where it's so important is in your secret place to have that one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God where you can just lay before him naked, be open to him and with him and worship him. Mm. I promise you, your life will never be the same if you develop that intimate relationship with God of creation, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and begin to just have a posture of worship and a posture of thanksgiving. Your life will never be the same, beloved. Never, ever, ever. No, no, no. I want to just remind you as we're closing here, beloved, that I am going to be with you on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to receive Holy Communion together and exalt our Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our life together as a body. As well as I am also going to be with you on New Year's Eve, we are going to have our Nail It to the Cross ceremony where we put all the things in our lives that we want to give over to God and we nail it to the cross, and then we open our arms to receive what God has for us for 2008, uh, 2019. We're going to do that together as a body on New Year's Eve. And then following that, as we transition from midnight into 2019, I'm going to release some additional details of what the Lord has been sharing with me for 2019. Beloved, <laughs> It's a joy. It is such a joy. It's a privilege and an honor to be here with you every time that God gives me that opportunity. I'm truly grateful for that. I write about it in my gratitude journal often. So for that, I say thank you. Thank you, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. I love you. God loves you more. God really, really loves you more. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.